Good morning guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. It's uh, Sunday morning, early, early hours, and I'm on my way to Gethley Gay Car Boot Sale. Thankfully, the uh, weather's held off for us, and the car boot is on. Um, which means that I have a friend of mine bringing some Waterford Crystal in for me, which is always a good thing. Um, hopefully this rain will stay off at least until 10 o'clock this morning. If it stays dry, two hours, three hours, I'll be happy. I can always go then to another car boot sale from Gethley Gay. One can hope, innit? That's all we can do, guys. From there then, I may take a run up to Merthyr Tidville, up the castle, because I haven't been up the castle now for probably a month. That'll be um, interesting to see what's going on up there. I haven't bothered because the dealer I had to buy off has been away. He's been uh, on holidays for six six weeks, I think, or five weeks. But he's taking a seven week break anyway. So I um, didn't bother go up there. I thought I'd go back to Cardiff. And as you saw yesterday, it was absolutely unbelievable. Bought that much in Splot and Bessemer yesterday. I didn't bother going to Tree more for after. I'm going to have to go looking for him and find it. One day it's going to have to happen. It's an indoor flea market with an auction. I don't know how regular the auction is. There's a lot of people go to it, I know that. So the auction I would assume is quite dear. And I don't like auctions anyway because... The only way you win at auctions, more often than not, is if you're paying over the odds for something. You have to be willing to pay more than the next dealer. And that means I can no longer sell to dealers, I can only sell to the public. And most of my sales go to trade. I sell more often than not to trade, and then the public come in, I may take a little bit of money off the public, but trade is my biggest thing. It's alright when you bang it all online, but the profit margin still ain't there when you're buying from an auction house. Not in my opinion anyway. And if they, if you want to put the profit margin on there, then you, um, you're you going to have to wait for that right person to come along to buy it. But the one thing you'll find on eBay, if you go to an auction house today, buying stock, to sell it on at the profit, you're going to struggle because you'll always find somebody selling it cheaper than what you've paid for it. It's crazy. I used to buy uh, Georgian drinking glasses, 18th century English glasses, in um, Hereford and that, and at Bloodlow. And what I'd find is I'd pay two and three hundred pound for a box of maybe ten or fifteen really nice glasses. You know, you'd have some Rhythm Dwarf Ales in there, you'd have some you know, pan top rummers and that. And I used to get 110 pound for a pan top rummer. And we're not talking that long ago, four or five years ago. Rhythm Dwarf Ales used to be 45, 55 pound, no problem at all. Yet I've seen people starting them on eBay for as little as 99 pence with no reserve and selling them for 4.99. I went through a stage where I was bidding on all the Georgian glass on eBay because it was so cheap and hoarding it. But to say I had some bad experiences with pieces coming damaged or pieces misdescribed, you can tell where a Georgian glass is just off the photograph, but they wouldn't describe a hairline crack or something. You'd have all the arsenal. In the end, I stopped doing it because this was years ago before. Now it's easy, I guess, with PayPal protection and things. But I still wouldn't want the hassle of having to return an item and go through the PayPal process. I find it just so much easier to just go out to a car boot sale and enjoy the treasure hunt. But you can buy Georgian glass for nothing off eBay. Don't get me wrong, there's dealers on there that sell you know, the drinking glasses for £100, £200 a glass and they get the money. And they're specialist 18th century glass dealers. But you get a lot of people who list them as Victorian. I'll give you a little hint. One way I used to search for them, I used to search glass folded foot. 
because the folded foot was a 18th century trait in English drinking glasses and um, they pull up a group of Victorian glasses and they'd say oh but this one got a folded foot without realising you know that's like 1740, 1750 and then you'd be bidding on a group of Victorian glass so one way of doing it was search folded foot another way I used to do it was search glass sharp pontal because I was only interested in the ones with the snapped pontal and things I wouldn't go as late as the polished pontals so what you do is search for the keywords and I'll give you a big big tip guys something else I learned while I was buying on eBay I was buying silver and gold uh, silver gold Georgian glass I was looking for anything I could make decent money on and I did for quite a while I was buying it off eBay and putting it down in the markets and selling it to the traders and making a profit with the trade but when you search on eBay um, let's say for example I'm going to use something nice and easy you like Beswick or Beswick um, search for it misspelt serious think how somebody would spell a word who can't spell how they would spell it uh, as it sounds and start running searches for misspelled words you'll be surprised how much stuff you'll buy for nothing because people have misspelled it and it hasn't been found that's a really good tip for you guys whatever your category is look for all the misspellings for it and run a search on ebay and don't just run a search on it save your searches so when somebody lists it as spelt wrong so it's not coming up in the general search you'll get notified off ebay that's one way of something slipping through the radar ebay is so big it has so many pieces hundreds of bloody categories they too many categories now it's very hard to find the pieces if it isn't catalogued exactly right with the spelling correct in the right category with the right photographs and the right description it can slip through the net and one way of getting it obviously is by people misspelling in the title what the item is I've done it myself I wrote Waterford in for something and missed out a letter uh, where I typed so fast and you know it's been a week gone by until I realised and I end the auction you'll get like one or two views on it if you misspell them so try that one out guys as a little uh, hint for you you have to bear with me as I'm driving you can see how dark it is out around me I'm, um, I'm quite excited this morning got a lot of money on me I had a lot of money on me yesterday too it's a nice nice feeling to go knowing there's nothing in that car boot sale I can't buy no matter what it is Thursday was a very very good uh, day I'm gonna have a few more of those before uh, Christmas where I sell some expensive pieces certainly took a lot of pressure off me this week so I uh, still haven't reached the 500 subs guys so I'm having a bit of a pout I've been on 490 to 493 now for two days my average is between 3 and 10 new subscribers a day um, but for some reason getting over that 500 is a nightmare pain in the bum As you know, my films are not scripted. I just simply chuck the camera, waffle on, chat away, and then show you what I bought, and then have a little moan. Um, have a little moan and things. I haven't done a vlog for a while, um, so just a little update on that would be children are back in school. For the first time ever, all the kids are back in school, and I've got no bullying or anything, which is really nice. Shannon's up in a school all on her own she chose to go to the big super school on her own as opposed to going to the, um, the closer school but she's got the uh, brains to be top in university she has she's unbelievable so all the kids are doing well I'm 
really pleased with that. Christmas is like 14 weeks away and we've all already started Christmas shopping. I don't know uh, about you lot, but uh, I've already spent an arm and a leg Christmas shopping. John, as you know, has got some really nice weapons put away. So he's gonna be jumping up and down Christmas morning when he sees those. It'll be nice. What can I say? I just can't wait to see his face. Um, I always do photographs and everybody does on Christmas morning. Um, and I'll probably do a bit of a vlog, seeing the kids Christmas morning, opening their gifts and that. You've followed me all year, you've watched me buy some of the stock from, you've watched me buy some of the presents from the weapons, you've seen all the weapons for John. Um, if you had half an ounce of um, what Shannon got, he'd be watching every film to see what I've bought. But I don't think he realises. <laughs> he's a little bugger, either that or we've seen it and he's keeping stop. So, yeah, I'll, um, I'll post up some pictures and what have you, Christmas Day of the kids opening the gifts. So really everything's going well. I'm looking out today to buy some, I was going to say card, but I think that's the wrong thing. I want cork display boards and I'm going to line it with some black material and I'm going to start displaying my costume jewellery better. Oh. I'm intentionally looking for nice costume jewellery now in the last four or five weeks of the car boot sales because when winter comes and uh, the stalls are slim I'm hoping to be putting out costume jewellery at two, three, four pound a piece and they got no alternative but to buy it off me because nobody else is there selling it through the summer the car boot sale buyers get very complacent they, uh, they see so much costume jewellery every stall has got costume jewellery and they see thousands throughout the year you know you can buy brooches for 10 and 20 pounds each at the car boot sale in the summer yet you go to the same car boot sale in the winter you either don't see brooches or they're three and four pound that's where i'm at i want to be um ready now for you know about october november start banging costume jewelry out to decent money i'm I've got plans on uh, how my stall is going to start to look, guys. And um, once the weather obviously breaks cold, I won't be selling no more. I'll be straight back online. But for the meantime, I'm certainly enjoying going out, doing the films and everything. Uh, I'll still do the videos through the winter. But it'll be... There's only uh, two to three car boot sales on a week uh, for me through the winter that I use. I may end up going back to auction, in which case you'll have some auction films. Wow, well, I'm the only one here. Yeah. I hope you haven't cancelled. Um, sorry. I, I will be going back to auction, possibly, to buy some of the you know miscellaneous boxes of coins or jewellery and things like that. And I will be doing all the how-to films, book recommendations, things like that. So, I will certainly keep the videos going throughout the winter. The summer time, obviously, stock is in abundance. Um, but we never know what we're going to find, guys. I'll also be doing a lot of private buying. Um, I've just put some more cards into estate agents, uh, saying I'll clear the house of any smalls. So... I don't want to do the furniture guys, it is too big for me, I'm on my own, can't lump it, I don't want to pay boys to do it, I haven't got a shop to sell it from a van, I'd have to hire a van, empty the house, take it to an auction house, I'm happy enough going in saying I'll buy all the small and then leaves you with the furniture to sell to another dealer, I'm happy enough with that, um, sometimes if I go in and the house, you know, it's only got bits and bobs, I'll put them to a charity shop. I'll just arrange for a charity shop to come and collect all the uh, larger pieces and I'll take the smalls. But I've put some cards in um, to state agents, so we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah, I think that'll uh, do about do it, guys, for uh, for now. 
uh, as you see I'm at the car boot sill waiting to go in I go now we'll wait but I'm in the queue <laughs> I don't know why I got here so early today with the weather forecast but there's three people here Yay. <laughs> three whole people but no I'm open now by eight o'clock it'll be full in here fingers crossed let's have a good day buying guys obviously you'll get to see everything I buy as I buy it I'll bring it back to the car and you'll have a little look see See you soon, guys. Okay, guys. Um, <laughs> I made the wrong choice. It's hammering down. It's not even 9 o'clock in the morning. It's uh, 20 to 9. And the Evans have opened up and killed the boot sale. However, one row turned up, which calculates to be about 12 cars. Bear with me a second, I'm trying to get out to this junction. Um, it works out to be about 12 cars, and in there you had some dealers. Um, and by dealers, I mean like market stallers, and not uh, antique type or car booters. Um, I've had a few buys. I'm going to show you them in just a minute now. I'm just going to drive down to my mother's now, I'll park outside, show you the buys quickly to finish up the video. I was I'm in an hour and I'm going to Bridgend, um, leaving now and going down to Bridgend, but it's been on for two hours. Every dealer in the world has gone down to Bridgend. Is it going to be anything left? It may be something, but the likelihood is slim to nil. It, and not the money I'd want to buy it for anyway. I like pieces that I can make on. Um, so. I wouldn't buy it at the money that, if other dealers are leaving it there, it's obviously it's too expensive. So it's just, I'm not going to bother going down to Bridgend. So for the first time in probably a year, year and a half, I finished work at 9 o'clock in the morning. That's shocking. Kids will be happy. I'm going to go have a cup of tea with my mum quickly now, show you the pieces I've bought, and they'll be home, spend the day with the kids instead. It's all good. It's got a bonus. So, yeah, the kids will be more than happy. Uh, they'll uh, be over the moon to see me today, to be honest with you now, because they don't normally see me much on a Sunday. But, oh, what a disappointing day. But you have to go. You know? I watched a film yesterday with Jim Carrey in it called Yes Man. And the moral of the film was, basically, he was playing everything safe, he wouldn't go out, he wouldn't do this, he wouldn't do that, he was what they called a no-man. Um, and although the film is a big joke about cults and things, it also has a bit of true messages in. I could have decided this morning, it's raining, not to get up, not to bother go. And what would that have paid off? Nothing at all. I'd have had a nice sleep, I'd have spent some time with the kids. I've got up, I've come to Gethley Gate, it cost me nothing. I paid a pound entrance and it's no fill because it's on my doorstep. And I have had a few pieces. So, despite everything, you still got to try. State yourself, when you're there questioning, do I go, I can't be bothered, I don't never get anything. You don't know. It only takes one car. And the week you don't go could be the week that car's there for you guys. You've got to stay positive, no matter what happens, stay positive, get up, get out there and have a look. And although it's been <laughs> a torrential rain again, a dozen sellers with probably 150 dealers there, I've still managed to pull a few pieces out of the bag. You know, I've had jewellery. I always have jewellery in Gethley Gear. Uh, Gethley Gear is a stable diet for me, silver and gold. There was one woman up there who was seriously unrealistic. She was selling Pandora jewellery. Bracelets, charms and rings. Now, most people when they come to a boot sale will say, oh, I want a tenner for that, I want a fiver for that, or 20 quid for that, or I paid 150 for that, I want 50 quid for that. But no, this woman, she had this Pandora stuff for years, and she went online, priced it brand new, and took 10% off best electro if she can sell it so she, I was there and she was oh well that's 70 pound new I want 60 for it or closest offer so you say all right what's your offer oh, I'll take a pound or two off so she literally 
10 or 15 pound per item under the Pandora shop retail. I can get a better discount just by waiting until December and having the 20% Pandora sale. <laughs> and have it brand new. So yeah, that was a shocker. And she turned up with uh, some nice charms and that, but oh my God, the prices. But what I did manage to do, there was a lady there who turned up with some vintage games. And I'm gonna show you them in just a minute. And they were absolutely lovely. And she wanted £15 each. Well, of course, I, I spoke to her anyway, because she was asking me to, asking me advice on where to sell home train sets and what have you. And I said to her, you know, a couple of locations to go. Um, but I told her they ain't going to pay any more than what the dealers will pay at the car boot sale, because the upshot is it's the same dealers going to the car boot sale as there is going to be in the auctions and things like that. So, I'm going to bear with me a second, just doing a little reverse park here, guys. Sorry about that. So, I explained to her, I said, you're not going to get any more. It's the same dealers coming to the boot sales that go to the auctions that got the shops that you take the stuff to. So I said, it's up to you. You can go down to Cardiff, sell it in a pumping station, which is a big antique centre. I said, that the dealer will pay you whatever. Or you bring it to a boot sale, yeah, and just put it out at the same money. If you know what you want, ask, and you can only be, be you know, say no or have offers. But um, we done a deal because of the rain came down. She sold me the two games I wanted for £15 instead of £15 each. So I had buy one, get one free. And I am quite happy with them. Let me put this seat back. Wrong one. Uh, I would say go back. There we go. Right. Now the first is a coloured and polished building bricks game. And it builds a ship, a truck and a building. Probably 1930s to 1950s. It comes boxed, which is always important. And even more important, it has the building instructions for the different pieces. So I can build the different pieces and it's complete. So there's nothing missing. It's all made of wood, you know, it's all nice turned wood pieces, hand painted or coloured, whatever they are. And you have the instructions here to make everything except the boat. I got the buildings, everything, but I haven't got the bloody boat instructions. So they'll have to guess on how to build a boat. But it comes with instructions, it's boxed, it's complete. I like that. Um, what do I rate it at? Well, you can actually build the, the ship just off that. You can see exactly there how to build our ship. So just off the box. Um, I rate this about 20 to 30 pound for this one game. I I do like dealing in these type of things. I have had older and bigger. Um, and I've had a few hundred pound for them, but it's quite nice for seven pound 50. I'm happy enough with that. The other one I had offer is Jummy the Bay Elephant Puzzles. Again, boxed. Same sort of period, 30s to 50s. Um, these are the puzzles these blocks make. So there's the one. Is a little boy and girl feeding the chickens. Then you have a couple of rabbits with a cat, the pink bow. The, a little dog looking at some ducks. Bear with me. A set of chickens and probably little bow peep with their sheep. <laughs> so all in all, this one little box set here will make all those puzzles. They've actually put the one puzzle together for us, which is the rabbit and the cat. So a really nice set, again, £7.50. Important to have these pictures to show you what the puzzle will make. Important to have the box and complete. And again, it's a nice little vintage item. I like that. 
So I'm really pleased with that. So there's two games by there that I'm really happy with. £15, I don't mind that. I'm happy enough. That's not a bad price. Um, at the end, it was raining. They were shouting out everything 50p on the stall. So I've had something for Shannon. All body oils or body scrubs. Body polish. Body butter. Um, and so on. 50p, brand new, sealed in the box. Never out the box. What a lovely gift set. That's going to Shannon today. I told you um, I had a dealer bringing me in some Waterford. He only brought me one piece, unfortunately. And I paid him the tenner for it because I've got a buyer for it. Um, I'll bang it out now, £20, and it'll be gone on Thursday to the same buyer that bought all the Waterford this week. So we have a beautiful Waterford crystal. Still got his original label. It's the Irish Waterford, not the Marquis. Uh, Waterford crystal preserve jar. Really nice. Beautiful pattern on it. Don't know the pattern yet. I'll, I probably won't even research it now because I'll just bang it straight out to her. Any Irish Waterford now, I've got the instant buyer for it. And I'll get 20 quid off her for that and then she'll ask 30, 35. We're all making a profit. It's perfect. It's beautiful. For 10 quid, I'm happy. Don't get me wrong, if I bought it off a car booter, I'd have had it for three or four pounds. Bought it off a dealer, but I didn't have to go looking for it. Um, it's there, and I do like Waterford, and I have got a buyer for the Waterford. So, that is pretty much a guaranteed sale now on Thursday, because they bought all the Waterford I took with me, and I'm going to pull some more out. Okay, give me a second. Let's get the seatbelt off. I told her I had some jewellery. I was the first one in the field almost. Um, paid a fiver. It's about two ounces in weight. Really good, heavy, thick, fully stamped gents bracelet. And it is heavy, guys. Really thick, big lumper. It's two ounces of silver by there for a fiver. There's about 20, 24 quid, 25 quid's worth of silver. Um, just in the weight, you know, 10, 12 pound an ounce. It's two ounces of silver there. Really, really happy with that. For a fiver. I'm not being funny, it didn't haggle. I went in, I was in the queue, I got in early. There was one row. Um, so I saw on table, how much? Five pound, there you go, thank you. And I got to the next stall as quick as I could. Next stall then, I had... A silver ring with the three Welsh feathers on. I don't know if you can see the th Welsh feathers there, guys. I think the camera's focusing on me, not the ring. Solid silver again. I paid £3 for that. For a gent's solid silver ring of the three feathers, I'm very clumsy today. You know, for three quid, that's a 12 or £15 ring. All day long fits me so it's a good size one thing when you buy in rings make sure they fit you guys we're an average size now if they fit me they're gonna fit somebody else most of the uh, rings you'll find on car boot sales are too small if they're big you're good because they can be cut and shrunk but more often than not you can't make a ring bigger because if it's got stones and that it'll affect it um, one key thing when you buy in rings to make sure they got more than scrap value which is just the value of the weight then you have they have to be at a size that someone can wear them or they have to be sizable so they could be made slightly larger and that depends on the ring the stones the set and everything but the one definite thing if you are paying more than scrap value or one more than scrap value that ring has to fit somebody so as a key make sure them rings fit or they look a good size that they might fit a lady. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck with them forever, guys. Trust me. Been there, done it. So. Nice two pieces of silver but there. I'm happy with both of those. The ring and the bracelet is fine. Um, so I had the games. The ring, the bracelet, the, and... The Waterford. 
think that's it guys. I don't think I had anything else, apart from a cup of tea. I did sit down and have a cup of tea with some dealer friends I know, and that's rare for me. Normally when I'm at work at the car boot sales, I haven't got time um, to sit down and have cups of tea and that. I'd like to get around looking. Today I'd been around three, four times around the row, and I treated my uh, friends to a cup of tea. They always come over, talk to me. They don't buy off me, I don't buy off them. Um, but you know, they're a lovely couple to talk to, and we sat down today, and I treated them to a cup of tea, and then she went and bought donuts, which I resisted. I did resist, guys. I was very good, very good on my diet. You'd be pleased to know. Um, so yeah, it was nice to sit down. I'd already bought one or two pieces. It was nice to sit down and just have a cup of tea and have a chat. So... It's, it's, it's been okay and as I've said the day's finished early so two or three hours of work I got a couple of little pieces I'm happy enough so I'll call it there um, that's today's video hopefully you've enjoyed having a well coming along with me you've had a little chat in the car you've got to see the one or two bits I've had it's not always a big success as you can see sometimes the weather beats me but I do think they're still nice pieces. I love the board games, uh, you know, the building blocks and the jigsaw puzzle. I love them. So, if you've enjoyed, I would really appreciate a like and a share, guys. If you're new to the channel, uh, please subscribe. And there's a little bell next to the subscribe button for notifications of my videos. You'll find me on Facebook. I have a page on a group, Antiques Arena. You'll find me on eBay if you run a search for Antiques Arena Clearance. And I have my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now. See you soon.